Good morning, this is Beyond Wallet and I am Sumit Chaturvedi. Let's go to our top headlines. Days after planning to fire up to 3,000 employees, e-commerce market player Snapdeal is raising product prices to boost margins. Batting big on India, German luxury car maker Porsche launches two new cars in the Indian market. International rating agency Standard & Poor's has downgraded IDBI Bank to BB, citing very weak asset quality but maintain a stable outlook on the state-run lender. And America's pharma sector has asked U.S. trade representatives to continue to keep India on priority watch list for alleged violation of U.S. patent laws. The first news is from eMarket, where the online marketplace Snapdeal, which is preparing to lay off more than 1,000 to 3,000 employees as it struggles to conserve cash, has informed its merchants via email that it had revised its logistics fee, normal packaging fee, standard marketing fee and gross margin rates. Snapdeal said implementation of the revised fees would result in change in the selling price of product listed. Manufacturers said the net impact will set them back by 3 to 4 percent on the selling price of the product. The apparel category, which is part of Snapdeal fashion, contributes about 40 percent of the marketplace sales volume. For clothes sold on marketplace, Snapdeal now has an additional packaging charge of Rs 17.25. Now staying with bad time, the snap deal where to allay the uncertainties surrounding snap deal and its future, Kunal Bahel and Rohit Bansal, co-founders of the online marketplace, sent out an email to employees last week saying the current phase is an inflection point for the company. Sources say the founders have also encouraged teams to take tough decisions in its pursuit of profitability. The communication comes at a time when Snapdeal is downsizing and shutting its non-core businesses to conserve cash and extend its runway fresh funding has been hard to come by. Now straight to Infosys where in a conference call signaling truce between Infosys co-founders and top management, Infosys chairman R. Sisha Sai has listed out steps such as institutional severance practice to prevent major issues from arising in future. Sisha Sai said the Infosys board would look at the variable pay that would be paid to CEO Vishal Sikha this year. The embattled board chairman also once again dug his heels in saying he had no plans on leaving the board. Well, clearly infighting is going on in Infosys and no one is clear when it is going to end. Now, shifting gears and going to auto sector where German sports cars maker Porsche has finally launched the 718 Boxster and the new 2017 Cayman in India. The Porsche 718 Cayman is priced at 81.63 lakh rupees, while the 718 Boxster costs 85 lakh rupees at Shorum Delhi. Well, the Cayman and the Boxster now come with downsized turbocharged engines. The 2-litre engine produces 298 PHP and 218 Nm of torque and this translates into exemplary performance of 0 to 100 km per hour in just 4.7 seconds in both cars. Well, I spoke to its uh, CEO of the Asia and of overall Middle East region. Let's take a look. A brand new car, perfectly poised for the market. So if we ask you to compare Middle East, India and Chinese market, how do you compare them? As you said that it's not possible, but still, what are the differences between these markets? I think what, what is really important is, is first of all, our customers are pretty much the same anywhere in the world. So they are well-educated, successful, discerning and demanding people. doesn't matter where we are in the world. With regard to how we are with, in, in the volumes, our established markets of the US and Europe have been there forever. China has been a very, very successful market us in short term. And for us, India is the market where we're going to be focusing on the few, in, the, in the medium to long term. They are completely different, but we have the same discerning customers in each and every market. Porsche is loved everywhere in the world and that's what we should do. 
one last question to you would be what else are we going to see from Porsche for India? You know, it's really exciting. Today, we are celebrating these two beautiful cars. Porsche, the brand, has always got something new. And when we're ready to tell you, and it's very close, we will invite you and tell you. Now, straight to Africa, where the worst is finally over for 19 major African mining countries, as global commodity prices are on a solid, solid climb on a Chinese policy efforts to boost commodity, as the intensive infrastructure and construction in China have been the key contributor towards the improvement of the Chinese mining space. Well, beyond reports on the bright future for the African mining sector, take a look at this story. The overwhelming price slump in global commodity markets had battered several commodity-dependent African countries. The continent's largest producers of copper, Zambia and the Congo, were the hardest hit nations. The collapse had triggered job losses over the last three years. However, things changed for the better since the last quarter of 2016, with iron ore selling at $80 a ton and a 10% jump in copper prices. Analysts revealed this at the just concluded Africa mining in Daba, a four day annual investment conference in Cape Town. Hopes were high among analysts that this year's conference may set in motion new mining ventures. I think the global outlook for Africa is improving at the same time that I think that the outlook for the mining industry is improving. Improving not maybe to the extent that we enjoyed in the middle of the last decade, but certainly in, compared to the conditions that existed two or three years ago. Companies in Africa which shut down operations may consider reopening as the World Bank projected metals prices at 11% in 2017. This is a significant improvement from an earlier projection of just 4%. Recovery in commodity prices may improve Africa-India ties as well. India, as the continent's fourth largest trading partner, may want to further develop trade. There are well over 200 registered mining companies in Africa and the resourcefulness continent welcomes investments in the areas of infrastructure and construction and the Indian companies are quite interested in them. Ingam Zeleni, Wiyan. Now go to Singapore where Singapore's central bank said it will allow foreign takeovers of the country's three finance companies as part of wider industry changes that seek to boost lending to small and medium-sized enterprises. While the Monetary Authority of Singapore is prepared to consider applications for merger or acquisitions if any prospective partner commits to maintaining SME financing as a core business of the finance company being targeted. Finance companies in Singapore are licensed to take deposits and grant loans to individuals and businesses with a focus on the SME sector. Hong Ling Singh Investments and Singapura Finance currently hold around 7 billion Singapore dollar of outstanding loans to SMEs or just under 9% of the total. Now, international rating agency Standard & Poor's has downgraded IDBI Bank to BB, citing very weak asset quality but maintained a stable outlook on the state-run lender. SNP Global Ratings today lowered its long-term foreign currency issuer credit rating on IDBI Bank to BB from BB Plus because they expect the bank's asset quality to remain very weak over the next 12 months, though it has maintained a stable outlook for the lender. It has lowered the issue ratings on the bank's senior unsecured notes to BB from BB Plus, but the agency was quick to add that it expects the bank's stressed assets to continue to increase as recognition norms improve. IDBI Bank's non-performing loans ratio rose sharply to 15.2% in the December quarter from 10.9% in March 2016. It reported loss of Rs 3,500 crore in fiscal year 2016 and around 2,000 crore in the first months, nine months of fiscal year 2017. Now, news from the pharma space where America's pharma sector has asked U.S. trade representative to continue to keep India on its priority watch list, which includes countries that are alleged violators of U.S. patent laws, claiming that the environment on the ground remains challenging in India. Among the key issues of concern for the U.S. pharma sector in India are unpredictable IP environment, which is intellectual property, high tariffs and taxes on medicines, 
regulatory data protection failure, discriminatory and non-transparent market access policies and unpredictable environment for clinical research, pharmaceutical research and manufacturers of America in a submission requested U.S. Trade Representative to continue to keep India on the priority watch list in the 2017. Continued to attention, IP and market access barriers in India has sent a strong signal of the importance of these issues to the bilateral relationship. It has fueled constructive industry-government dialogue and has been critical in preventing further deterioration of innovative environment in that country. Now straight to retail space where the 19,000 crore rupees RP Sanjeev Koenka Group has announced foraying into the apparel retail business which will be initially sold under the 2B Me brand in the group's hypermarket chain Spencer's Retail and eventually through independent stores. Well, the business will initially be launched in Kolkata and then the national capital region and Hyderabad. So far food and staples were the main pillars of the RP Sanjeev Koenka Group retail business which is now extended to apparel for children too. Spencer's Retail is attracting 4 million footfall every month of which 1 million is from Kolkata only. Now to some event happening in Bangalore where the 11th edition of Aero Show started on Tuesday. The main focus of the mega event is to focus on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Make in India initiatives. Hundreds of Indian and foreign firms are participating in the show which was inaugurated by Defence Minister of India Manohar Parikar, Airbus and Boeing. They are companies which are there expected to sign deals under the Make in India banner. Delegations from 109 countries across the world are participating in the five-day long event. Now, the premier Indian companies such as Tata Motors, Mahindra and Mahindra and Bharat Forge are breaking new grounds in the U.S. market, making new investments in setting up offices, technical centers and production facilities. This comes at a time when the U.S. under its new president Donald Trump has adopted an increasingly robust protectionist attitude where it is trying to safeguard jobs for locals by penalizing imports while promoting domestic manufacturing. India's largest automotive company by revenue, Tata Motors, is setting up a center in California to promote and scout for next-gen breakthrough automotive technologies in areas like autonomous driving, connected cars, alternate fuels and other advanced mobility solutions. Tata Group owned design and technology services providing company Tata ELXI, which is working on driverless cars, forged two partnerships in quick succession in the last two months with US companies. The company announced partnerships with Disti Corporation Florida to create user interface solution to automotive clients delivering high-end HMI design. Innovative and appealing visual content for futuristic displays in the vehicles were delivered as well. Well, now it's time for a short break and after the break, we'll continue with our coverage of markets, both India and global. Welcome back to Beyond Wallet and let's go to market news where Sensex in India has opened with a gain of 100 points but then came down to a gain of 20 points. Nifty was also trading flat at the moment. TCS and SBI will be the two stocks that will be in focus today. Among other markets, Asia was largely in the red in early trade with Japanese Nikkei down around 0.7%. Korea, Taiwan and Singapore were trading with marginal losses. U.S. stocks closed at fresh highs for a fifth straight day as traders continued to bet on a pro-growth growth agenda under President Donald Trump. In currency trade, U.S. dollar retreated from one month high as investors took profit. Well, let's go to our guest today, which is Kiran Jadav. Uh, thanks for talking to us, Mr. Jadav. Uh, can you tell us about today's market? How do they are like? How are they likely to pan out today? Good morning, Sumit. Uh, we be believe that uh, we, we should see further correction. There are two positives uh, that have come up. One is uh, the buyback that TCS has done and uh, as announced, and SBI being merged with all this, their subsidiaries. There are two positives, and that's the reason why these two stocks are up. However, the larger market, I believe, is still in a corrective phase. 
for the last eight days, the uh, the Nifty in general was trading in a very narrow 30, 40 points, after which we saw a crack yesterday. The, it has broken crucial supports of uh, 8750, 8740, which is a bit of, uh, uh, which, which will lead to a corrective move. We believe that 8700 is the next support, but this could be taken off and we could see the markets uh, uh, going down uh, uh, to around 85, 80, 85, uh, 50 levels in the days to come. So this is a, this will be a corrective move after which we'll see the next leg of the rally. Mr. Jadav, a lot is happening in the IT space where there was a problem with Infosys first. Now, NASCOM yesterday said they will revise the forecast of growth in May, though it's likely it will come down further. So what do you think about the, the big poster by boy of Indian economy, IT sector? How do you think these talks will pan out today? Uh, for today, I believe uh, IT sector is looking good. For the medium term, uh, although although uh, if you see the charts in general, a bottom was made on the Nifty IT at around 9,400, after which we have seen a good kind of rally. A panic was seen in, a panic move, uh, down move was seen in the month of January again, but it made a higher bottom. That itself tells us that uh, there is a good kind of uh, demand that is coming up at lower levels. The negatives have already been factored into and we have made a new high of uh, from the month of November onwards. So the uh, the Nifty IT has started uh, making a higher top and a higher bottom for pattern formation, which is basically bullish. So we believe that in the in the next three months, whatever NASCOM has to say, we believe that uh, uh, if uh, the Nifty IT stays above the 10,500 levels, then the likely target would be 11,200 because uh, we strongly believe that the negatives have been factored in, in the chart itself. Moving to global markets, Mr. Chadav, uh, where uh, Boston Federal's Eric has said that there will be at least three rate hikes in U.S. per year. How do you see this uh, particular comment coming from uh, Boston Federal's president? And also, what do you think about the other uh, consequences or other consequences of, of whatever has happened over the last few days as far as Trump is concerned? How do you see the global markets pan out? See, if uh, if the markets have uh, have known that there will be um, uh, interest rate hikes in the U.S., then it will not be a surprise. And uh, the small correction that I'm talking of uh, from the current levels to around, say, um, uh, 85, 80, 85, 50 levels, uh, this could be a strong buying point because in general, if you look at our markets, we are all priced in. In the last couple of years, if you look at the uh, markets in general, we have been range bound between, uh, uh, say, 8,000 and 9,000 levels. So this consolidation has been uh, very decent. And uh, once we move above the 9,000 mark, then we'll start moving ahead once again. Uh, uh, if any kind of surprise uh, element is there, only then we'll see a b bigger shakeup. So now um, investors in India have uh, really known uh, to take uh, uh, the interest rates uh, in, in their stride. And I believe that uh, once 85.50 uh, comes, that will be a level where uh, good investment opportunities will definitely look at. Another thing is we should, uh, uh, we have been advising our investors to have a stock specific approach rather than an index specific approach. There are so many, uh, 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 what do you say, sectors which, which do not really depend on the US economy. Uh, the U.S. interest rates. So the internal uh, uh, demand will propel the, the Indian markets, the Indian uh, sectors, and this is something that we have been watching forward to. And Mr. Jadav, uh, coming back to SBI, where Cabinet yesterday cleared the demerger of SBI into different, different small, or in fact the merger, uh, I should be corrected here. Uh, what? How do you see this uh, this panning out for SBI? Is it a, is it going to unlock value for SBI? How do you see this all panning out for SBI today? Yeah, it's a uh, positive for the banking sector in general and especially for SBI and its subsidiary companies. Uh, getting together will uh, definitely help and on technicals, this uh, chart is basically uh, uh, at resistance levels. Uh, 280 is the level to watch out for. If 280, uh, whenever that level is taken off, we expect this SBI to rally to around 350, 360 in the days to come. Uh, overall, uh, bullish sentiment prevails in SBI and banking counters. And therefore, we have uh, been buying SBI at all dips. And one last quick question on how do you see the markets panning out next week or, or over the next few days? And what will be the important cues to look out for? 
uh, basically uh, uh, we feel that uh, the markets will be range bound on the higher side 8800 8820 has been a big barrier if you look at the derivative data uh, the, uh, big amount of call writing has been happening around those areas so uh, i i believe that uh, the uh, february series will uh, plan out in a range so the range will be 8800 on the higher side and say 8600 on the lower side worst come scenario and this is the range to watch out for the real move will come out after the election results the up election results which uh, which are the major cues and they are uh, scheduled to be uh, uh, announced at uh, i believe it is 12th of march so before 12th of march uh, i don't see any big move so taking advantage of this news we can uh, have derivative uh, positions in place to uh, make sure that uh, one way move is ca captured uh, in into the investors pocket all right thanks so much for talking to us mr jadav thanks for your views here so that's all today from beyond wallet stay tuned to beyond for more news and updates thanks for watching us